One asks themselves the question, especially after we have lost our temper. Why do we have a temper? And how can we deal with the temper? And is it natural to have a temper? Is it okay to have a temper? Is God okay with having a temper? And what is the end result? When we think about human nature, when we think about our own perspective of life, from the moment we wake up till we go to sleep, we have been given the gift of choice. That's the difference of human beings versus other creations that God created. God gave us free will. So free will is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, free will gives us complete control over everything. Over everything we do, everything we think, everything we say. It's we have complete control. But with that in hand, sometimes we lose that control. And sometimes we don't conduct ourselves appropriately because we have free will. And the free will pushes us and directs us and tempts us and seduces us to do things that we don't want to do, do things that we shouldn't be doing. And yet, that's the way God created us. So with that in mind, we need to realize that there is certain conducts that are acceptable, certain practices that are acceptable, and that is between man to man and man to God. And that is what the Bible has all been about. That is what the Torah is all about. The word Torah comes from the word Hora'a, which means lesson. It's an operating manual. It teaches us how to live our life on this world. So the question is, what happens if I get triggered? Someone does something that really, really gets me going, pushes my buttons. And, and how do I react? Some of us explode. Just, we lose it, as they say. Some of us internalizes it. We allow it to eat ourselves up internally. And some of us just loses our temper. Or as the expression is, we get unhinged. And at that moment, we get transformed into a person who we usually aren't. And once the rage has resolved itself, almost all the time, we look back and we are remorseful and regretful that we lost it. Couldn't have I handled it differently. And that is where the concept of faith comes into play. That when we can truly internalize that everything that happens in life happens with divine providence. It's a hard concept to truly incorporate. When things are going good, we can say, yeah, divine providence, God set this all up in motion. Thank you, God. I'm grateful everything is going good. But what happens when things don't go good? Now, at that moment, are you really thinking, thank you, God? Or are you really cognizant that God is aware of what's happening? Or that God set this in, mo in motion for a certain purpose? That becomes a little harder to incorporate. But if we can employ and realize Divine providence happens in every footstep and everything in life happens with divine providence. Yes, that requires a tremendous amount of faith and commitment and belief and trust in God that everything that happens in life happens for a purpose and a meaning. If you're able to incorporate it at some level, 
then before you're about to lose your temper, before, before you're about to get unhinged, you can think to yourself, okay, why is this happening? How would God want me to react? And maybe even just look up to heaven for a second and think to yourself, says God, really? Why are you pushing my buttons? Why am I being put into a position that I'm about to lose it? When you go through that process, you would realize and recognize that losing your temper is as if you are denying in God's presence. You are denying in the existence of God because you're thinking that whatever is happening, it's you and you're the only one who exists and you're the only one who can make these things right and you're going to be the one who's going to lash out and really lose it because it's only you. But if you truly realize that God is in control and God would want you at this moment to absorb the events that are happening instead of losing it. There was once a child who had a terrible temper and just couldn't control himself. Anything, he would explode. So he went to his father and he asked his father, he says, Daddy, could you help me control my temper? So the father said, yeah, I can. I have an idea. You see the fence outside? Every time you have urge to lose your temper, I want you to take the hammer and bang in the nail into the fence. And that's what the child did. Every time he was about to lose himself and go into a tantrum, go into it, lose his temper, he would run out, take a hammer, and put a nail. After a while, the whole wood had plenty of nails in it. And he says, Daddy, what do I do now? So his father said, continue. When you have the urge to lose your temper, go to the fence and pull out each nail. And when you're done, let me know. After a little while, the child comes to his daddy and says, Daddy, I think I am okay now. The experience of being able to bang a nail into the fence and then pull it out really helped me control my temper. And I think that I've learned how to control my temper. So the father says, son, I'm so proud of you that you reached this level of maturity and understanding. And the father asked him to go outside. They went outside and the father showed him the fence and showed him all the holes that the nails bored into the fence, the nails that he put in and pulled out. And the father looks at the child and says, son, you see all these holes from the nails that you put in? Yes, when you had your temper tantrum, you banged the nail in and then you pulled it out. But you know what? You have learned to overcome your tempers, but the hole in the fence still remains. Son, when you lose your temper, you are creating a scar that can never be filled because the hole will always be there. And that is the reaction to your temper. So the lesson learned, son, that when you have your temper, don't just think about yourself. Think about the effect that your temper has on others. And once you create that hole, it's a scar that is always there. This lesson is such a true lesson to all of us. The Talmud writes, whoever gets angry, whoever loses the temper, is equal to idol worshiping. As the reason we spoke, because when you lose your temper, 
you are denying in God's existence. And this is why it's so important for us to work with our refining ourselves and realizing that we may have some natural reflexes that need refinement. God created us all differently. God created us all with the same temptations, some stronger, some weaker. God also gave us the tools that we need to refine ourselves. And that is the journey of studying the Bible, studying the Torah, and to truly learn how to refine certain natures that we need to refine ourselves. And when we're able to refine ourselves, then the next time we're about to lose our temper, we'll think about it. Think about the hole in the fence. Think about God. And it will become easier and easier for us to withhold our outbursts, our outrage, our tempers, because you are, you are so much better than that. You are so much more refined than that, that you are a representative of God. You are created in the image of God. To always realize how would God want you to respond at that moment. So let us all continue working on ourselves with self-refinement. Study the Bible. Study mysticism. Study and learn about God, about life. It will help you in your day-to-day -day living and into your interpersonal relationships. May God bless us all not to have any need to exercise the right to lose ourselves, to get unhinged, to have a temper, but rather let God give us the opportunity to be able to keep our mind with a sanity, to have our minds always collected in a healthy way, to never have an outburst, to never hurt someone in such a way verbally. God will bless you for your effort and God will make you stronger as you thrive and strive to do better and be better. You do a little bit and God will help you the rest of the way. God bless you. God loves you.